One of the new features to the new Epson interactive projectors is the ability to do touch. So whereas before everything was controlled by the use of a pen, now the same functions that you could perform with the pen you can perform just using your fingers. The bright length finger touch models require an external module that mounts directly to the board and plugs into the projector. Once the finger touch unit is installed and calibration is completed, the finger touch application is very simple to use. The touch functionality is included on the Brightlink 595 WI and also on the new Brightlink Pro coming out in 2014. Um, they support up to six fingers touching simultaneously and also support Windows from XP and beyond and Macintosh 10.5 or later. First of all, I can move the toolbar with my hand because I'm using the Brightlink 595 with touch-based capabilities. If you look at the toolbar, it has several functionalities. First off is the mouse. As I said, when I select the mouse, I can then touch different areas on, it, say, a web page and navigate as if I was using a pen or a mouse. I can do that by using this um, mouse capability. Here, I have some shapes. Here I can go in and I can select circles, squares, rectangles. I can make them in different colors and I can make them filled or not filled. And I can also vary the line thickness. So in this case, I will do an oval and I will select that it will be green. And when I do that, I select those tools and then I drag and there is my oval. If I want to erase, I can simply touch this bottom button which is to erase the board. In addition to that, I have some pen functionalities. The top icon represents um, a, a regular pen where the writing is opaque. So if I select the pen, I can select the line thickness again, picking a, a thick line. I can also pick my color and begin writing. I also have the ability to do a highlighter, which gives me something where the uh, ink is transparent. So again, I can select here, I can select my thickness, and I can select, in this case, maybe yellow, at which point I can highlight what is on my screen, just like I would with a highlighter pen. One of the other functions of the Easy Interactive Toolbar is this cursor tool. The cursor tool allows you to select objects and move them about on the screen. So in this case, I'm going to draw an object. So it'll be a rectangle, and I'll just draw something right over here. And there's my rectangle, and then I can take my cursor tool and highlight that item. At that point, I can then move it about the screen. I can also choose to rotate it. And I can choose to resize it as well. If I want to delete it, I can select this drop-down menu, and it says Delete Object. When it comes to the writing tools, you can select various line thicknesses and colors, or if you just want to use standard colors, the toolbar comes with three standard colors, black, red, and blue. If you choose on the left side of the toolbar, you'll th pick a thin line. If you choose on the right side, you'll choose a thick line. So I can grab the red tool, and I can make a line that's very thin, or I can grab the right side and make a line that is much more fat. If I wish to erase, I can select the eraser tool here and begin erasing my lines. Or I can select clear all, which I do by pressing this button here and it will rem remove all the annotations on the screen. Objects will not be removed. Objects need to be removed by hitting the drop down on the object and selecting delete. One of the things I can do with the toolbar is move it from side to side. This comes in handy when there's multiple people working at the board. For instance, if someone's working on the left side of the board, they can hit the arrow on the left side. It'll move the toolbar to within their reach where they can select the pen tool that they wish to use. Then when I want to use the, the pens on the right side of the board, I select the icon over here and it moves the toolbar over to the right side. One of the other things you can do is lock the toolbar. So in this case, I have it locked. When I write, the toolbar remains on the screen. If I don't want it to remain on the screen when I'm writing, I select this key icon and I turn it so it's on its side. Once I do that and I begin writing, the toolbar disappears. If I want it to reappear, I touch the side arrow. 
This concludes the video tour on how to use the Epson Brightlink Interactive Projector. For further instruction, please refer to the Brightlink User's Guide, which can be found at www.epson.com on the product support page of your particular model. Thanks for using Epson Interactive Educational Products.